Welcome to the blog. My name is Mandy Heth and I run Vintage Bubbles and Bits. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple different types of costume jewelry that you'll probably see the most commonly. And hopefully this will be one of many of the blogs that I do for the site. So two of the most common types of marked costume jewelry that you'll find have just the names Japan or Western Germany on them. And I get a lot of questions about these pieces from our, my customers who are looking for a little bit more information about, you know, who manufactured them, if there were uh, names of different companies that, that made those types of jewelry, um, and just kind of a lot of questions in general because it seems relatively vague since they just have the country name on them. Uh, and in fact, they actually have a unique story. So most of the jewelry that you'll see that's marked Western Germany and Japan was produced right after World War II. And what they actually were doing with the jewelry was sort of unique. Um, the jewelry was a way for both of the country's economies to turn around after the war. Uh, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but the war devastation lasts longer than just the time frame of the actual war itself. And many of these countries were in such dire straits that more people starved after the war than died during it. And so one of the things that we were trying to do was to figure out ways to revitalize the economies of these countries. And one of the first things they started doing was coming up with commercial products that we could start importing to the United States that would be manufactured in those company, or in those countries, especially turning uh, industrial uh, complexes that were used to make weaponry into something a little less dangerous. So that's where a lot of this came from, is a lot of the factories were converted from doing military type things from guns and ammunition and, and uh, you know making uniforms and things along those lines to creating costume jewelry and I would say this is probably one of the first great examples of when the United States really started um, importing commercial goods from other countries so that's where both of these things started with Japan, you'll see a lot of um, what I would call some really basic uh, types of costume jewelry that almost every costume jewelry collector has because these are just you know, your great starter pieces that kind of go with everything and they're usually inexpensive so it's an easy way to start getting into collecting vintage. So one of the first things that the Japan's really well known for is making the beaded necklaces like this. And they range from single strands all the way up to five or six strands long. Most of the time they were plastic beads, but they also had crystals. They came in a variety of colors and a lot of different options. And then where you'll see the Japan marking on all of these is usually on the shepherd's hook on the back that helps you um, attach the adjustable necklaces. In addition to these kind of necklaces, um, Japan also created a lot of other things, like these hair clips. So this is a basic rhinestone hair clip with a gold tone plate on it. Um, very beautiful, very simple, but a smart Japan. So one of the other kind of unique things that they developed. And then you'll also see out of Japan a lot of your really um, basic either clip earrings or screwback earrings. So these are examples of screwbacks, so kind of little button ones. They did the bigger quarter size pieces with lots of beading as well. And those you'll find very, very um, influential in 50s styles. Then with Western Germany, um, you'll get some of those as well. They did the beaded necklaces, they did the, um, the different kinds of earrings, but they also uh, did a couple things that are a little bit more unique. You'll see more items like this scarf clip. And what makes this unique is that things coming out of Western Germany often had hand-painted um, porcelain pieces in them. So something like this, a lot of the brooches, and one of the reasons this was happening was it was a way for them to put German artists back to work. And um, people weren't really buying art <laughs> right after World War II. And so the artists were struggling pretty heavily and having things like this and also pottery and a lot of other glasswork that had hand painting on them was a way to put the artists back to work. In addition to that, Western Germany often did some really unique necklaces, and you'll see pieces like this. This one's got about 12 different strands and a really, really unique, ornate clasp in the back. 
Um, you'll usually be able to tell it's a Western Germany piece just because it definitely looks way more European in style, um, but also has that 1950s flair. So you'll find a lot of those kind of pieces to be sort of a throwback to Victorian time periods um, and a little bit of or Edwardian, but always made of either plastic or glass and kind of less um, precious metals uh, out of those kind of pieces. So that's a little history lesson. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Tried to make it quick but informative, and as I keep doing these, I hope I'll get better, uh, and you'll put up with me as I'm learning along the way. If you like this and you want to learn more, go ahead and sign up below for and follow our YouTube page, or continue to come back to the blog where I'll post these hopefully weekly moving forward. Thanks a lot!